Hey y'all, I am just waiting on the car to warm up and then, let's see, going to the post office first, dropping off a few packages that I sold over the weekend, Most two of them last night and one last Friday. So I need to drop those off this morning and then I need to run by the antique booth. So we're gonna, we're gonna head out and do that something different we're getting we're getting out of the dungeon shop okay post office is done now we're on to the antique store There she is. Okay guys, I figured I would show you around the antique shop that my booth is in and show you my booth as well while we're here. A lot of the Christmas figurines and stuff there were newer. I don't believe that was an actual aluminum tree. Maybe the pieces were aluminum or pieces for an aluminum tree. Uh, looks like that green avocado ceramic mid-century modern uh, canisters there they wanted $80 for them, for them and you know that's probably right about retail they had some Christmas ornaments here glass ornaments I was thinking maybe shiny brights or mer mercury glass but I didn't see any of that uh, in this case here has some Looney Tunes and Smurfs and collectors glasses and I think they had about $15 a piece on those they got kind of an eclectic little booth here I probably saw in that case different locks and watches and belt buckles and such and collection there of different old spice tins cool little Japanese tea set there I don't think it had the creamer with it though some good farmhouse stuff there there's the honey bear ever since I bought him a couple years ago I see him everywhere now and I just thought he was cute when I saw him. He's one of those things that I bought thinking he was maybe worth more than he was. They wanted $5. I think I paid a couple dollars for the one I got. It was in an antique store somewhere. And when something's only a dollar or two, it's a lot easier to take a chance. This was kind of neat. This is a uh, handmade vintage child's... Oh, whoops. No, sidetracked. Uh, this here was an apron. It looked a little small has that thin material on it. I don't know if those are violets or, or whatnot. They wanted only a couple dollars for it, but I have some aprons I have to get rid of first. But back to this thing. So it's handmade vintage wood kitchen uh, play set, and it included these little dishes here. And they wanted $40 for it, which I thought was actually really good. And I do think this was vintage. This would be kind of an easy thing to uh, build new and you still make it look vintage, but it just, it even had that smell to it. You got different crackle glass. Most of the crackle glass in here is priced, you know, on the high end of retail, which is totally fine. You don't always have to leave meat on the bone. That little satin thing there, it had said jar, but the lid didn't come off. I was a little confused for a moment. And then, oh, I thought this was neat. $8 for this pillbox hat. It was in great shape, like it had never even been worn. I don't think it had any tag on the inside, although I didn't search real hard for one. A cool little vintage fondue set there. And this was a neat vase. It is a Japanese, I believe, maybe Chinese. Probably Chinese. Uh, koi vase those were transfer print koi's it's a newer vase obviously but it was still really neat it was a little bit heavier than you know traditional older uh japanese pieces and stuff porcelain pieces had a viking swung glass there you can usually tell viking because it kind of has that drapery style towards the base of it a little more crackle glass Ooh, barbini i think it is i do believe so Kind of a standard Barbini 
look. You'll see a lot of the bowls and stuff in that same design. Uh, but they had on here Barbini, Murano, Pink, and they wrote Gold Flakes. I would think Aventurine would have been appropriate, but I, does that mean they don't really know glass? I'm not sure. Whoops, did you see that? Fenton. Not Silvercrest, I can't think of the name of that. It's it's like Silvercrust, but it's pink. It's a melon shape, a uh, little bud vase. I think those were produced in the 40s and 50s. Uh, those there, they might be Homeco or another imports uh, company with those owls. They're like that thick, heavy plastic retro style. Now this one, the tag says tortoise shell Murano glass vase. And the tortoise part of it was like an amethyst. I don't know if you can tell there. And it has that crimped top. I'm not really convinced that that's Murano. And they only wanted $40 for it. And I felt like the size of that thing, if that truly is Murano and they, they fully believed that and knew it, they'd probably be asking more than $40 would be my guess. I could be wrong. It's a vintage, excellent condition. Donald Duck uh, Carnival chalkware piece. Uh, neat little, what do they call those? Mariette puppets? Am I saying that right? Looks like a little train lantern. And here's my booth. You can see my little chieftain guy down there. He's like three, three and a half foot tall. He's a, he's a big guy. He's been up there for maybe a couple months now, but he's priced at about 325. I keep my booth at a 15% discount 100% of the time. And my sign says except for firm, but there's, there's nothing in my booth that's firm. So everything that I price in there, I, I price it for my markets not for eBay and then there's also additional discount on top of that with the 15% because the idea with my booth is to move things and whether that's things that are a little bit larger or more delicate I don't want to ship or it was stuff that came in lots and I don't want to mess with putting it on eBay you know there's there's a handful of different reasons why something may go to my booth instead of online So this was a really cute little planter. I'm not sure who made him. His base just said USA on it, but he's got those bright green eyes. Really cool looking piece, great condition too. That little blue sticker that fell off said $5, but I think it went to the plate sitting next to it because it had an identical sticker. And then that piece of paper that was taped to him said $11. I would have probably gotten him for $5. He was in great shape, he, no craisin or anything on him. Got some really neat EAPG and different cut glass. I imagine these are probably Nippon or Noritake sets here. And there's a lot of vendors uh, running really deep, deep discounts on their booths. They have a sale uh, coming up. When I came in today, they said that this Saturday they were running kind of a store-wide sale asking the vendors to participate. So I'm probably going to go up there and uh, change my 15% out signs for, I don't know, maybe 40% off or 50% off except for firm and then maybe mark my chief guy or something mark him down and then mark him firm I have a couple little miniature vases like that I believe they were made in I have some from Japan and Germany actually this is my little Royal Copley booth well it's not my booth but it's one of the ladies that helps run the antique shop and she collected Royal Copley for years and years and years and so she had brought a bunch of pieces in. Some of my pieces I actually bought from her because most of her Royal Copley she really prices to move. She's got just, I don't know, lots of random little cool trinkets in here and stuff. Now this booth viewer discretion advise maybe have your children step away for a moment when we go in there it's kind of a vintage spencer's store if you will this is that booth that has a lot of the cookie jars and stuff they've got some neat ones i'm not in the market for cookie jars though i have enough enough for now but i have them all listed I'm proud of that. Okay, for your discretion advised. I still wanted to show you guys in here because uh, this vendor, like I said, it's kind of a vintage Spencer's store in a way, and you'll see what I mean here in a moment. But uh, 
it always runs good sales and actually has you know kind of those just cool oddball collectibles uh figurines and and i don't know just different kinds of things things that i don't typically sell or even look for to resell you know obviously lots of posters and as i said viewer discretion advised but i always like coming in here and checking out this booth i don't know that i've ever bought anything out of this booth but i always like to come in and kind of look around Now, I don't think that's vintage. I think that's obviously some kind of remake or something, or at least not terribly old. Now, I notice a lot of the sculptures and figurines and stuff that they have up here, oftentimes they are damaged in one way or another. Some severe, some very minor, but I notice... It, uh, I think more their forte is in the ephemera, like the posters and things. And I think these are maybe extra things they come across. But a fun booth. A fun booth nonetheless. empty vintage beer cans there some of these empty beer cans hold value i don't know enough about them to give any sort of direction on that at all but i do know that there are some out there that can that was a cool little uh, what would that be a croquet set That uh, red glass vase there was, I believe, made in China, most likely. Cool, though. I mean, it's uh, cased red over white, and I guess technically clear over the red, too. But a cool display piece. Doesn't really matter where it came from, but, you know, it's not a Murano. It's not a designer name or anything like that. But I do suspect that that is a Marana dog in there. I didn't want to bother getting a key to look at him any closer, but from the few moments I stood there, he appeared to be Murano. I saw those from out in the aisle and I knew instantly that they were K Finch. If you look at the eyes, you'll see how the eyelashes kind of curl up and how on the nostrils, same thing. K Finch is known for that curly cue. Typically in all of her pieces, you're going to see that, whether it's in the hair of the piece, you know, like a, a dog or something, you'll notice the hair is curled in those cues. Or for instance, with that pig, you'll, you'll see that. And that's kind of a direct indicator of K Finch. There are some uh, ceramic pieces out there in the style of K Finch, but K Finch is pretty distinctive. Once you've seen enough of it, you kind of can just look at it and, and know. Uh, these were more or less costume jewelry pieces in here, but they did have some kind of cool bangles down there. Not sure if those were lucite or just plastic, I'm not sure. Now what I like about our antique shop is that they have a good mix of, you know, kind of your more boutique-y stuff for the folks that lean that way to, you know, the more new things that have the vintage or antique appeal, uh, the more feminine type of vintage and antique. But then they've also got a lot of booths with mantiques, the, you know, more uh, male-friendly things. This booth had, you know, some neat pieces there. Not, nothing terribly uncommon. I thought that was a really pretty picture. It was Bavaria. I couldn't see quite close enough on it to read that first word, but the bottom was Bavaria.
Uh, this booth here, I believe, is running 75% off, which regular people circumstances, that would be great, but I'm not regular people right now. This is really cool. I'm not sure who makes this. I didn't see any marks on the bottom, and I haven't looked into who it might be, and they didn't have it written on there, so... I'm not sure, but really cool. You know, very minor wear to the design, really. Uh, I mean, really minor wear. Really, really neat set. I think there was a total of six glasses there. Now this one, they wanted 65 for this, and I don't know, maybe that is an appropriate amount, but considering that it's marigold and it's not a super difficult set to come by, so I, yeah, I don't know. In my mind, I feel like 65 may be kind of a stretch on that, but I'm, I'm not sure. It, it, anything's possible. This was a Norman Rockwell print, but I thought that was actually really pretty. It looked good in that frame. Oh yes, yeah, some uh, fomite extinguishers there. I thought she was really pretty too. Just kind of a simple art. A little bit older, mid-century frame. Nothing super special, nothing high value, but still neat. I liked that poster there. I don't know that I've ever seen this cloves shaker before. It sounds familiar, but I don't visually remember it. These are glass. And what did they want for them? $35. I, I did think about getting these. I will be honest, I did think about getting those. Okay guys, so that was the antique booth. Uh, the sun is so bright right now, I can hardly see the camera, but I hope you guys had fun kind of cruising around there looking with me. The light's not real good. The music was kind of loud, so uh, I'll voice over walking through there, sadly, but uh, just kind of wanted to show you a few things that they had in there. It's kind of an eclectic mix, uh, but I like that they have kind of things that will attract both men and women in there you know they have like your what do they call it mantiques they have that for sure so uh, i had to run up here and restock the booth i just added a few things today not anything exciting yeah apparently they're having a vendor's christmas sale this coming saturday so i always keep my booth at 15 percent off everything unless marked firm but there's nothing in my booth that's firm, so everything is 15% off, but I may, just to get some inventory moved out of there so I can start to really move new stuff in, I may go up there and put like a 50% off or something crazy. Most everything that I have up there is either, it falls into a couple of different categories. It's low price stuff that I just don't want to deal with selling on eBay you know it's worthless to pay the fees on it and then the other part of it are things that are you know really large to ship uh, really big to ship really difficult to ship really you know like that chalkware uh, not well I guess he's kind of chalkware he's a universal statue statuary is that what they're called? Uh, from the 70s, and he is like a, a chieftain, or I don't remember what they called him, but he's like this three, three and a half foot, you know, statue, and he's heavy. He's at least like, I don't know, five or six pounds minimum. He's a heavy guy, so he got put up in the booth. And he's, I think I have him at 325, and they usually sell for somewhere right around there. I normally don't put things on the high end of where they sell up there, but he's too unique of a piece, especially in that condition. He has just minor paint wear on him. He's otherwise perfect, so I can't justify not putting full retail on him, especially given the fact that he's 15% off, so, uh, you know, but yeah, that's basically what I use my booth for. 
anyway, I'm probably making everybody pretty uh, sick right now. I don't have a, a holder thingy in my car for my phone, so it's a little extra jiggly. I'm sorry about that. I thought I would kind of take you guys along with me on this ride and show you I do exit my house occasionally enter the real world uh, it's it's bright out here <laughs> but anyways uh, I guess that's it for now guys and I hope you had fun getting out of the house with me for a minute dropping off packages running to the antique booth all that fun reseller stuff so until next time I'll catch you on the next one <laughs>